Hey guys, welcome to session number 48 of the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. Mmm, noodle soup. One man with one microphone who likes to relax to the sounds of Slow Meadow. Welcome to the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another session of the Trailer Music Composers Podcast, a podcast all about trailer music and being a trailer music composer. Um, I thought I'd do something a bit different today, kind of give you guys, I guess, a little freebie uh, as a kind of thank you for your uh, all the time and effort and energy you've put into listening to this podcast over, well, almost over the last year. Um and especially seeing some of you have been sharing, in fact, quite a few have been sharing on Instagram and stuff, you know, your Spotify binge factors, you know, when they tell you what you've been listening to over the year. And so many of you, my podcast has featured uh, at the top of your lists, which has been uh, very flattering, especially when I appear next to Joe Rogan. You know, that's great. You know, it's also uh, a little nod here to uh, Guy Jones and the Composer Stories podcast um, brought to you by Protégé, uh, which also appeared on the same lists, which is very nice because obviously you guys are enjoying the interviews with the composers and the um, random solo banter that uh, I'm delivering. So I thought I'd give you like a little bit of a freebie because obviously you guys know that I have a a the trailer music school which is where i host my f- my courses and forums and a community for trailer music composers and aspiring composers too um and I have uh, the trailer music course, which is kind of like the big foundation one, which kind of covers the whole base. Then I have the hybrid hybrid trailer music course, which takes what you've learned from the trailer music course and discusses it in the hybrid world, you know. Uh, so you t- how to write a hybrid cue. Uh, and then I have three piano courses, which is more, it's not so much specifically trailer in the way that most people would assume, but it kind of covers three bases, kind of uh, dramatic piano, which is aimed at historical dramas and uh, uh, Oscar nomination uh, trailers, Oscar nominated films. Uh, a nostalgic piano, which is kind of like for family trailers and romance trailers and uh, sort of uplifting trailers and kind of the the kind of thriller sound bed piano stuff for obviously thrillers or actually which can be applied to TV too. Uh, so there's uh, five courses on there. Uh, I do have my contact instrument contact instrument creation course on there too, uh, but that's not for sale. That's uh, that's just on there for once you've bought one of the courses. That's when you can gain access to it. So enough jibber jabber about what's available. Uh, what I'm giving you today is uh, an insight into one of my courses, my flagship course, the trailer music course, which I created. Uh, several years ago uh, and I absolutely loved it it was a huge learning curve for me uh, kind of having to talk and do everything at the same time you know Uh, and what kind of gradually came out was that firstly how much I like innuendo uh, and I didn't really realize until I started doing these sort of 40 minute videos and the amount of times I'm like oh hello you know (laughs) so I think I already knew that but I didn't think I'd I'd sort of wear it on my sleeve so much in in my first endeavor into course creation Um, but also it highlights to me how much I really love this stuff, really love sharing knowledge. Uh, and what I'm sharing with you today is one video of, it's 16 hours of content on that course. It's it's a real beast and it like it covers a huge span of stuff. Um, so I kind of go through lots of basics, kind of lots of foundations, and then you'll see me over the period of several videos creating an entire queue from scratch. Uh, and then at the end, we've got a lovely uh, sweet bonus with Toby Mason kind of going through his mixing and mastering process from my tracks that I've sent him, uh, which was, a, you know, a huge honor that he he agreed to do it and, and a huge bonus for you guys uh, and in a learning front. Uh, and the video I've decided to share with you is not video. You're going to just hear the audio. So you're going to hear me sort of not maybe not quite so confident, maybe not quite so... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, openly British, you know, uh, uh, quirky in my humor. I guess that's what I was trying to look for. Uh, maybe a little bit nervous, uh, but 
the meat is there. Now, this is a really, really good video, and I really like this video because it's uh, it's covering a really important thing, uh, and it's actually uh, how to create your own epic hits uh, f from scratch. And I'm talking about uh, not hiring a Tyco and you know and a series of snares. I'm talking about taking default instruments from Logic. This was on Logic Nine. I recorded it so long time ago. Um, you know, to be fair, the samples sound a bit rubbish, but when you put it all together, it you're like, oh, actually, that sounds pretty decent. Uh, because I talk you through how it's done and why everything is included in the sound. Uh, so I really hope you enjoy it. And I hope it kind of gives you a kind of glimpse into the courses that I do, as well as um, hopefully teaching you guys how to create your own epic hits from uh low quality <laughs> low quality logic samples or you know uh, replace the word logic with any other door uh, and maybe low quality is a bit harsh you know uh, just not spitfire <laughs> basically right so uh there you go guys enjoy hey guys welcome back in today's video we're going to be using some uh well creative sound design to create our own epic hits now before we get started i just want to have a little chat to you about what is involved in an epic hit um and i'm not just talking about one massive drum playing because we have sample libraries for that and admittedly we have sample libraries for epic trailer hits but if you want to get a little bit more creative and create your own trailer hits um then you need to know what's involved in them now like as i've said it's not just one massive drum the thing about trailer hits is they span the whole spectrum there'll be really low frequencies, mids, highs, very top end air, that it contains everything because it wants to have punch, it wants to have impact, and it wants to be heard. Okay, so I've got a couple of uh, instrument channels here, uh, and we're just going to start with uh, our low end. Now for this, I'm just going to use some really basic samples uh, from Logic's own store of instruments really uh, so if i go into the uh, one of the samplers we've got i'm going to load up something from the factory i want something low so let's start with a kick drum why not uh yeah let's go for studio please studio toolkit again i'm trying what i'm trying to do is oh hello show that you can do this stuff without having really expensive sample libraries you can make those sounds so we'll do some with some uh freebies from logic and then i'll do some with uh the bigger sounds and we can talk about the difference a little bit there we go right now where is my where is my kick there we go Okay, so if we have a look at the EQ on this, it's, it's, there we go. We can we can see that we're getting a nice amount of beef around the 60 hertz region, which is where we should be. Okay, oh, hello. and there we go. Let's zero these off. Okay, let's turn the analyzer off. Right, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce that. That sound there. Just a kick. Simples. Okay, let's just quantize it so that it's in the right place. Now, in Logic, you can do this nifty little thing called bounce in place, uh, where it just takes the sample you've just played and bounces an audio file. So if I zoom in, there we go, there's our audio file. Now, um, I'm going to mute that and I'm going to go back to this original and we're going to be talk, talk a little bit about how to give a little bit more impact, because that sounds, give a little bit more impact, because sounds pretty dry. So let's load up a reverb. Okay, I talked about this earlier on, where we talk about trying to mimic the sounds as they would exist in space. I don't mean in space, as in like the sun and the planets, I mean in physical space between two objects on Earth. That's weird. Anyway. Uh, large spaces. So we're going to load up some 
huge space. Uh, so let's big up Thunderclap. Okay, so this is... That's pretty nice, but it's not what I want. I want something a little bit more that contains more of the EQ I want. So let's load up an Abbey. That's a bit better. So let's turn up the reverb a little bit and I'm going to get into the EQ. Now, lower frequencies travel further. So if you want to mimic that, that sound as if it's happening in the distance, you, you roll off the top end. Nice. Right, okay. Now I'm also going to add some compression to that to make our tail longer. So let's turn the throat. I'm, I'm not going to be cons too concerned with being gentle because I want it to be. A bit brutal. Let's harden up that knee a little bit. Drop the threshold. Okay. Now, that's what I don't want to hear the impact of that kick because I've already got that saved here. So let's. Nice. Now, there are a couple of elements of that I don't like. So I'm just going to swap the EQ until after the compression. Because there's a there's a kind of a weird boxy sound. It's probably this one here. Yeah, it's that one. Okay, so the way to do this, uh, what we want to do is, what I'm trying to do here is pinpoint that sound I don't like. So let's just make you. So the way to do that is really notch your cue up and then amplify it. And then you can play around and you're listening out for the one that rings. And then if you think you found it, cut it out. But that's not the one. The one I'm that I don't like this. It's about there. You hear it ringing? There we go. Now I'm just going to take a little bit more out there too. There we go. That's the sound I want. Okay, let's bounce that in place. Uh, kick verb, I'll call it. Okay, so let's have a look at the different audio. So you can see this. The difference in the audio now, you've got this very sharp and short attack and very little decay here, whereas this one, the attack compared to the tail and the decay is considerably smaller. Okay, so let's have a listen. Okay, now we can just, again, I, I'm, I quite like that. So let's add another sound in. We're going to get back to our studio toolkit. Right, let's mute these chaps. It's the, there's a science to this, by the way. I'm, what I'm looking for is toms. So let me get up i'm going to get up a different kit for this so i'm going to open up the studio tight kit okay already i can hear there's going to be a problem problem frequency in here we'll we'll locate that in a second let's just pencil this in to save me having to There it is. Okay. There's our nice ringy tom. Okay, so you see it's got it gives it it's giving us a nice impact, but not what I want. Again, I want to brutalize that a little bit more. Okay, that's good. 
Now let's silo it and let's see if because he Woo. Let's load up that channel EQ. Let's... Okay. Put the analyzer on. Okay, so I actually quite like that. Ooh, it's like a nice little bass drop already, and just just by using our toms. So if I put the space designer on, I don't want to hear that. It's it's too epic. Okay, I want something a little bit more, a little bit more roomy. So let's go for something soft. There we go, scoring stage. Okay, let's take off the EQ. Okay, so you can see that the way the shape of the sound, you're going to get a little bit of delay on the reverb, and I don't want a delay on the reverb. So let's go into a gated chamber. There we go, you can see there's there's not an immediate delay to the sound. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, let's bounce that out. Tom noise, because I'm gonna mess with it again. See look at that lovely tail now we've got in there. Let's zoom in. Nice. Okay. Crunchy. Now, I want to elon. I want to elongate this a little bit. But first of all, boo. Maybe I'll just do this. See what happens. Yeah, actually, I think I'm just going to take that part of it. Let's do a small fade in, just so it doesn't click when it comes into the sample. There we go, move it up a little bit. And let's compress it again to bring up the volume and to bring that bass ever more present. I want a VC. There we go, that's dirty. Let's bounce it again. We can look, look at that. There's a difference in waveforms there. Um, ah, okay, let's undo that because what we have is, uh, we were getting a clip. Now, uh, include all your tail, include normal lights off. Let's try that again. There we go, that's a bit better. You see, we're not going to get that clip now. So already our sounds that we've created, we've got, from our tom, we've got a kind of bass noise. From our kick, we've given ourselves space. Awesome. Right, now let's take off these again. So let's open up. So I want to see if, if there's any sort of world instruments that can emulate something like uh, uh, a taiko or or even a timpani, but without 
this obvious tone to it. So let's see what we've got. Uh, world. Uh, whether this is going to be all African kit. Let's give it a try. That's actually quite nice. Problem there is that's kind of doing what my Tom is already doing. So if we play it together, it's it's already got that kind of bassy sound to it. So it's not quite what I want. So I'm going to load up uh, another type of kit for this. I'm looking for ooh gongs. I know where I can find them. So it does help if you if you know your way around your workstation. So I'm looking for drums and percussion, ultra beat kits, Asian kit. Okay. Because I know this has these nice sounds. See this already has some reverb and compression and EQ on, and a limiter on it. So let's so let's play play that in. <laughs> Great timing, sir. Right, that drum doesn't sound too good, so let's That's the stuff. I'm looking for something that has a little bit more bites, a little more impact to it. That's kind of like this kick. So if I bounce this out, I should see a little bit more of a, an attack to it. Uh, Asian kick, I'll call it. There we go. So you see the attack on this drum. Okay, good. So that's now given our... I mean, I'm not really going to do anything to that, actually. That's given our... Our epic hit more of an impact. So now if I add that original kick... See, I quite like that kick, but it's too clean. It's too obviously a kick. So I'm just going to throw this through some distortion. Um, and I, I quite often, if I'm honest, I like chucking things through um, guitar amps. Because there we go. You can hear that's already, already flavoured it nicely. Because I don't need any low end, because I've already got loads of low end going on. Right, I want more distortion. So, where am I? Let's check up the gain. Let's take the mid down. Oh, yeah, the treble down works nicely. Let's take the presence down a bit. Yeah, dull it off. Spring reverb. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous. Uh, dynamic mic. Let's go offset. Okay, I want American gain. Cool. Okay, so you can hear there's a ringing going on there, so that's where I get my precision, e precision EQ out. Tighten up the cue a little bit. That's kind of cool, actually. There's a little bit of sound design, but there we go. We've notched it out. So let's bounce that out. Kick filth. You know, that sounds about right, doesn't it? There we go. So let's have a listen to the whole track it, without that being soloed. That's nice. Okay, now we need some metal. The sound of some clanging metal. Um, because that's going to really cut through the mix. So let's have a look at what we have in Logic. Cinematic textures. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's go for sound effects. 
Oh. Not quite what I was hoping. Uh, special effects. <laughs> Again, not quite what I was hoping. Uh... I quite like that. Let's just load that one in anyway. Lovely tail, that. <laughs> it's my beautiful timing. So if you notice, I haven't actually loaded this into my trailer template, because at the moment we're doing something slightly different here. in place big bang bip so this is another thing that's given us a really long tail and these are the things that are really going to give us that feeling of space let's just skip something i think it's the tom isn't it no sorry kick that Something is creating that. It's that, isn't it? Let's take that down a little bit. And actually, let's lo let's lengthen it. Time pitch machine. So original destination. We're we going to take it down, reduce the tempo quite a lot. Process and paste. So slowing it down. So that kind of like weird kind of machine noise that we're getting from the gated reverb. Nice, we're taking advantage of that. Sweet, let's turn it down again just a bit. Okay. All right, let's go back up here because I still am looking for something that sounds like metal. Don't know how. Oh look, trailer effects. Yes. Who needs expensive sample libraries, eh? Dirty. Let's move this down. Let's take that down again. Okay, that's just good. Again, I'm trying to think about all the frequencies together. Still looking for that glass sound. Or metal sound, actually. Think what I'm going to do. Trail effects, listen. There we go. Right, admittedly, that has another, another bit of low end to it, but it works. A bit loud, a bit present. So what you can start to do is, once you start to build up the sound, which we have done, Let's add in some orchestral drums. Uh, let's get rid of the trailer effects. Just getting rid of all the kits because I like to keep everything as clean as possible. Software instrument, please. Right. Orchestral. Are there any percussion in here? Yes, percussion kit. Where's that orchestral snare? There it is. Right. 
orc snare. I'm going to run through a couple of snares here now because I want. Let's get let up the the closest electronic kit we can. Oh, that's quite cool. There we go. Again, I want to cover all aspects as if in front of me there is huge drum. Way off in the distance, there is another there's an explosion. Right in front of me, there's some glass breaking. You know, it's it's as if there's just explosions everywhere. So I think we've covered the distance. You know, we've created the space with the long tails, the big reverb, the low frequencies coming through. But now we need some more bite. So uh, let's... That's quite cool. But just to give it, that, again, a little sense of space... I'm going to chuck in a little tape delay. That's quite cool, I like that. Yeah, I might actually not do that. Because the problem, the problem here, if I did that, is that I wouldn't then be able to use this on any project because you've got this tape delay that's set to a certain tempo, 120. And if I was going to write a piece that was in, I don't know, 110, it might sound a little bit odd having that bouncing around slightly off tempo. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce that down, and I want to, again, I want to sort of treat it so I can extend that tail, that high. I mean, look how short that is. It's a little blip of noise. There's not too much I can do, so I might lengthen that again. Time and pitch machine. Yeah, let's press and paste. So we should get this gritty. Yes, there we go. So what I've done by slowing it down, I've extended that tail. And you can really start to see the grains of the distortion. <laughs> awesome. There we go. Let's turn up just a bit. And I can't hear this orchestral snare what's, uh, what's uh... So let's crush it. This is the fun thing about doing this stuff. You know, you don't have to worry about everything being, uh, you know, oh, my mix is muddy. At this stage, it doesn't matter, because that's kind of what you're trying to achieve. Oh, let me say, brutal. I should just want to see. There we go. Fresh up. There we go. Yeah, there's a ring on that, isn't there? So let's... Precision EQ to find that ring. There it is. Right. There's also the overtones of that ring, so sometimes you have to do a couple of layers of precision EQ. There we go. That does the job. Let's bounce it, bounce it in place again. Orchestra. Blah, blah. Delete that channel. Don't need any more. Sweet. Right, I think we're kind of getting there. So we've got the kind of the harsh metal sound. We've got the the distorted close up, you know, as if it's too loud, and our how our ears haven't had a chance to compress it, so it distorts. We've got the sense of space from the low frequencies. Now another thing which you will tend to have in epic hits is a little rise into the hit. 
So one of my favourite things to do. Let's see. I'm going to take that distortion. I'm going to bounce that in place as something again, so it's its own separate audio file. And I'm going to reverse it. This is the easiest way to do this. To create a little quick rise. Let's chop off a bit at the beginning. And you can do it in here in the in the audio file or you can do it out here with the automation. There we go. That's the first start of the tail. I want to get some of the let's see what I'm doing is I'm just bouncing down all the bits that I've already created and reversing them. And cut it short so it's in the Now this is the other way I can do it. Use the fade tool. So I can get more of a whoop. But this is going to be a bassier sound. Awesome. Let's turn that back on. Okay. Again, we're getting there now. Let's see if we can get some scrapey sounds that go that don't just reverse into that, but that can now. So let me see. So they can now kind of roll over the peak here. Scrapey sounds. Let's add in another instrument. Let me go back into my EXS. 24 and go into the factory and let's think about what we can do that's going to create that sound that kind of like scraping sound it's almost like a cymbal roll let's try some sweep effects <laughs> misleading name isn't it sweep effects let's try transition effects you know what actually I'm just going to create my own rather than using these uh, factory effects let's go into drums and let's go into single drums no we don't have snares I want crashes Oh, it's not a file. Do, 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 do. Acoustic drums, let's go, let's go in the cavern kit. Where's my crash? Okay, let's play that in. So the crash actually really nicely finishes that sound off. So let's bounce that down. And then let's bounce it down again. So we've now got the crash itself here. And we're going to have this one, which is the re reversed version of the crash. It's my cheap and cheerful way to create your own rolling effects. Let's cut the beginning off of each off of this, so it's going to seamlessly go into the other sample. And I'll use a crossfade there. So here we go. 
There we go. So it feels like we're getting... In fact, I might shorten that a little bit more. It feels like... The cymbal player is rolling into the sound. So again, lower that fade. There we go. Let's turn that down just a touch. And actually, I don't think we need such a long tail for the cymbal. Again, let's shorten it again. I think it should just be kind of... <laughs> Fab. Okay, there we go. Nobody can hear you scream. Okay, good. So that is the our first epic hit, really. So what the elements we have here, let's go through them again so that you can bear this in mind. We have the low end rumble, which creates our sense of space. Nice. We kind of have the harsh mids and top. Well, and this one as well. Let's let her hear that again. Harsh mids and top, which bring things closer to us. So we have things happening in the distance, things happening right in front of us. And then we have these swells into the sound and that roll over the sound. So you'll hear this a lot. Um, there you go. So that is your epic hit. Using just simple stuff that I got out of the box from Logic. Okay. We'll probably do another one in a sec that uses the, the sample libraries because, well, just because it's awesome fun. So let's just bounce this out as... So what you can do is you will go to your sample folder that you've created. I'll go to mine, music HD. Hello. That's it. Users, me, music, sounds. And I'm going to go zero zero. Well, you don't have to. In fact, what we can do here, new folder, zero zero, epic hits. Create epic hit zero zero one. Now the reason I'm calling it zero zero one rather than zero one is because you're probably going to create a lot of these, and it's quite good to do this. Um, uh, just because you know, if you carry on doing this over the years, your samples will get your your sample library will get more and more and more full. And the point when you get to one hundred, it just makes it easier for the numbering system and having everything in order. There we go. Bounce it down. Right, now I just want to do one more thing. I want to see if I can load it up. Uh, I wonder if it's loaded, or it recognized it yet. There it is, today. Because I may have forgotten to do something. Yes, I did forget, didn't I? Okay, see? Important lesson here, guys. Bear in mind that you want to actually treat this epic hit itself, so mix... Uh, get the the desired effect properly. So I want to compress this. I don't want to see this huge uh, distorted peak here. So let's mute this. Let's select everything. Uh, in fact, let's go into the mixer. And we're going to take all of the channels, chuck them through a bus. So this is now going to be our, our bus to affect this. Nice, so that's really clipping, which to be honest is, is nice. I, I'm not that fussed about things clipping in the works in, in the uh, workflow itself, in the project itself, but when it comes to clipping as an exported audio file, mm -mm, I don't really want that. Uh, so, let's just first of all add in some compression. Now, I'm not going to go quite so brutal on this one. Again, straight out of the box with logic, compression, uh, and you know, I, I like presets. 
I think uh, I can fiddle around with it myself, but it just sometimes it's just quicker. Just to grab a preset straight out of the box. Uh, okay, so I am sorry, I'm not really paying attention. Let's just do some smooth compression. Now let's see what happens to this peak now. Okay, see that compression has really topped it off. Let's add a limiter into the compressor. Great stuff. Right, now let's add that to create an audio channel for the selected arrange track. Is what I'm going to do. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm actually going to bounce out the sound file from that. Bounce. I'm going to call it Epic Hit 02. In fact, no, yeah, 02. Um, okay, there we go. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Let's add in another audio file and let's just look at the difference that has been made. Okay, it's subtle, but you see it's picked up the tail and it's softened off this clipping here, which is great. Bonus. Now what I would like to do, I'm muting that, in fact I'm going to delete that channel. This is our uh, Epic Hit 02. I think we can we can still have a, have a little go at that. So let's load up a setting. Do, 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 do. So I need to actually tell you what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just thinking about I can compress that a little bit more. So maybe I'll just get open up the compressor get a compressor again. And this time I will fiddle with it myself. So if I compress it too much, it's going to lose that hit. But the tail is there. That lovely, lovely tail. Okay. So let's bounce that in place. Whoa, look at that. Okay, so the effect here is my hit, my I've lost my a lot of my attack. So this is quite, it's quite a good process to actually start bouncing out in places so you can see the effect it has in the waveform. I don't want that. That's not what I want. I, I think this one here, Epic Hit 02, is, is the beans. There we go. So let's just let's just put it in context as if that's the intro to our trailer. Let's load up a piano. Not gonna load up anything posh, just gonna load up a logic piano. I can't read keyboards. Hmm. There we go, just a piano. So I want something quite far away, so I'm gonna go for the Bossendorf piano hall. There we go, something simple. Very simple motif going on here. Just to create the idea. Quantizing it. Uh, epic hits, let's reduce that a little bit because what I'm gonna do, we're gonna repeat it. Oh yes, now let's just do a crossfade in, fade that out. I might actually put that up. There we go. And let's change the space design here, because I want this to feel, again, like it's in some huge space. Let's put it in the, in the Abbey. I like the Abbey.
Yeah, and let's... I'm going to move this in a little bit. It wants to come in there, doesn't it? Okay, let's have a listen again. So this is, uh, you know, so just by using our trailer hit that we've just created and a very, very simple piano idea, have we created our trailer intro. There we go. Okay, so just by using our trailer hit from Logic Noises out of the box, we've created our intro to our trailer. Right, guys, uh, so I think you should have a crack at it yourself. Create your own epic hits using the stuff, the free stuff that comes with your digital audio workstation. Thanks, guys. So there you go. I I hope you enjoyed that. And the wonderful thing about this one is I kind of feel like at the end of that, it's like that scene in in, um, The Matrix when Neo kind of unplugs for the first time and he's like, I know Kung Fu. Except this time, you know, you're going to unplug from the podcast and go, I know epic beats. Uh, I know epic hits. (laughs) Love it. Uh, Really good fun. Uh, Yeah, I enjoyed listening to it. Um, Obviously, I skimmed it because did the material myself didn't i uh yeah you guys are absolute legends thank you so much for listening if you did enjoy this and felt like you learned a lot and got a lot from it you can of course head on over to the trailer music school and check out the course it's the trailer music course fully comprehensive course in uh the the foundational elements of writing trailer music uh, and i know it's helped a lot of people in their journey uh, and that's all stages of the journey this is the thing that I found ultimately flattering about the course is it's helped complete beginners as well as established composers transitioning into trailer music um, so yes check it out and I do hope you enjoy it and have a good week chaps <laughs> <laughs>